As we continue the countdown to our Fusion Apps keynote, we are here with Aiden Gomez, co-founder and CEO of Cohere, as well as Miranda Nash, Oracle Group Vice President of App Applications Development and Strategy. Thank you both so much for being here. Aiden, we, uh, I, I oversee Oracle Video and we've done a, a customer testimonial or partner testimonial with Cohere and uh, I feel like I'm meeting a celebrity now because <laughs> <laughs> we've, uh, we've used it so often and it, it was such an exciting, exciting video. But uh, first and foremost, how is Cloud World going for both of you? We're on uh, day, full day two here now, so it's been an exciting few days. How's it going, Miranda? Oh, it's going great. I mean, we're talking to a lot of customers about AI. What's the path to adoption? There's obviously a lot of interest in that, and um, it's been very exciting. Absolutely, and Aiden, this is your second time, second right? Time. Yeah, and how's yeah. it going for you? Uh, equally overwhelming as the first time. <laughs> lots of meetings, talking to lots of partners and customers. It's super fun. Oh, I love that. That's great. Well, Aiden, you were here last year after you know we announced our partnership, um, and we're going to talk about what has happened since then. But just for those who may have missed last year's conversation, let's just do a a uh, quick rehabbing, talk about Cohere. Um, wh what's the kind of secret sauce that makes Cohere special and our partnership special? Uh, I don't know if there's any secret sauce. I think most of the credit goes to the team. It's an incredible team that does fantastic work uh, and is really focused on the mission of delivering this technology, AI, generative AI, to enterprises. Uh, and so we're fortunate to have been able to partner with you guys to deliver that directly through Fusion, through NetSuite, and OCI. As the, as the eye was on the ball of all the consumer stuff, working behind the scenes on the stuff that's really going to make huge differences in the way businesses are run. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Aiden, what, what makes Oracle a great partner for Cohere? I think there's multiple facets, of course. The first is OCI is an incredible compute partner. So you guys build fantastic supercomputers and we need those to build the technology that we build. The second piece is that Oracle is not only the place where the data of enterprise lives, but it's also the place where the applications where employees do their work lives. And so we have the opportunity to inject generative AI directly into the hands of employees globally. And so all of those pieces together just add up to something I think extremely unique and valuable. And Miranda, vice versa here, um, what do we see in Cohere that made us want to partner with them? Well, you alluded to it. The, the focus on enterprise was really the appeal, right? But what I didn't predict, at least myself, was what a great partner they would be in terms of the collaboration, the iteration. We're constantly iterating and improving things for our joint customers. And uh, that's just been a win. Well, let's stay on that for a minute. Well, how, how has the partnership evolved in the past year? I, well, remember I mean, last, last uh, Cloud World, Aiden, when we sat down together yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and we said, we got to make this happen in the next you know, month or so. And we really worked hard at it together. And um, since then, you know, we're basically now in a new phase where our end customers are adopting. We're bringing more, Amer more capabilities out to market. And we'll get to some of the new stuff soon. Yeah, for sure. Before we do that, what are, what are some of the benefits that customers are seeing from this partner partnership? Are there some common use, use cases? I'm going to ask you both this, but Miranda, we'll start with you. Well, retrieval augmented generation is a very important part of what we're delivering together. And again, a, a real appeal for working with Cohere, because what that allows is our customers to get the language benefits from the model but use their own private data to interact with, get answers from the most important data in their enterprises. And Aiden, what would you, what would you add to that? Yeah, I would say the most common use case is retrieval augmented generation. I think uh, going forward, we're going to start to see agents and this idea of automation and augmentation of the workforce um, become more prominent uh, and become more of a feature. And so that's a lot of what we're doing behind the scenes right now, is developing those capabilities into the models and into the product. We're going to talk about that in a second. I just want to come back to retrieval augmented generation for a second. I mean, I think when people started hearing that term, it sounded super technical, and, but it's kind of the low-hanging fruit, so to speak. I'm not saying it's easy or, or that it's unimportant, but it's, it's achievable in a, in a much more direct way 
are we seeing the uptake of that now? Has that technical mindset like, oh, this is, oh, that's kind of too technical. Have people crossed that barrier? I mean, look, I was with a customer yesterday who I, I said retrieval augmented generation. He, he's like, I'm not, the, and he's like, oh, rag, okay. So, uh, you <laughs> know, shorten uh, <laughs> it, and it makes more sense. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it has entered the lexicon amongst our customers. Sure, good. good. Okay, so um, the name of the game here has obviously been AI. When you think of AI, um, can you give us some examples or possibilities of AI that have you really excited right now? Aiden, we'll, we'll start with you. I'm going to ask you both. We'll start with you. Yeah, I think I, I already mentioned it, but agents and this idea of automation, there's a lot of barriers to developing that technology. It's a complex task that right now we think only humans can do. Only humans can solve these complex, multi-step, very reasoning heavy problems. Yeah. And we're starting to see models crack it. Can you actually really quick for, you know, some of our audience tuning in right now may not actually know what you mean when you're talking about agents. Right. Can you just kind of dissect that for one second? Yeah, so if you think about like what you might be familiar with with these chatbots and AI, it's basically the user, you ask it to do something and then it responds with text. Right. And that's fun and nice and that can do some stuff, but it's not the real potential of the technology. With agenthood, we add in the notion of the ability to use tools external to the model. Yeah. So it's not just streaming some characters, some, some words back at you, but it's actually doing things on your behalf. And that's a very complicated thing. You need to know how to use a tool, you need to know how to combine tools, how to solve problems that require many, many different steps of action. And beyond that, when humans are trying to solve something, they make mistakes. Right. And so you need to be able to make a mistake and figure out how to fix it and work around it. And so that whole idea is what we call agenthood. Okay, so let me dive into that just a little bit further. Um, how, so people think about large language models in kind of a, and, and maybe this is the wrong way, it's a narrow way of thinking of it, is generating something, the generative part of AI. How are large language models processing and learning from and creating uh, the ability of these agents? How does that work with the LLM? They act as the, the backbone or like the reasoning engine. So they come up with, if you ask it to do something complex, they come up with a plan, a first plan, to try and execute that problem. They then start using, using that plan to try to solve the problem. They encounter uh, a blocker or a mistake. They then need to be like, okay, my first attempt didn't work. Let me revise my plan and try again. And that iterative process might require one, two, five, ten different tries. And instead of just being like an immediate response that comes back in a second, we can imagine these models taking on really complex tasks that might take hours to accomplish. And they're going to have to continue to try and work through their problems. So that's, that's sort of where we're, we're headed. And I think once those features hit products like the Fusion App Suite, that's when the value of AI really gets realized. And, and Miranda, uh, Steve Miranda, is going to be talking about that, I think, in just a, not too long from That's now, right. actually. So, uh, and he gave us a little bit of a, of a glimpse into that yesterday. What, what can you tell us about the way that Oracle is working with this technology to put it in the hands of our customers? Well, and to add to that, what's our differentiator? If, yeah. if more companies are doing this, what's the differentiator That's here? That's a good question. So let me start with what we, we announced this morning, the availability of the first agents in Fusion with Cohere under the covers. And uh, it's exactly what Aiden just said. One example is our document IO agent, where basically can look at you know, an, a, an expense, an invoice, other kinds of financial documents. So for example, after the show, when we need to go file our expenses, basically the, uh, the agent reads that expense, creates the right a transaction in the system, sends the expense report, and it's just all taken care of, right? So that's saving us all a lot of time. A lot of time. I have I'll an agent you. I've built to reject her expenses. <laughs> Already done, thank you for the help. Exactly. Our pleasure. So nice, so nice. I'm sorry. And, no, no, that's that. all right. That, and in terms of our differentiations with yeah. yes. what you asked about, um, look, it starts with the infrastructure and the fact, I mean, the infrastructure probably is what attract, part of what attracted folks like Cohere to, to Oracle. 
and we make those models available in our own infrastructure. But then we couple that with the enterprise data. So, and because of that, we're able to maintain our customers' data security, which is fundamental. Yes, we're hearing a lot about that this week. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And then the last is that we embed it within the workflows they already use, right? This lowers the cost of adoption and helps customers get started with AI. And I've, I'm sure Steve Miranda mentioned this, but we, we AI is embedded in our apps with no additional charge. Right, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, which is allowing, we've been talking about this all week, which is allowing our customers to use AI right now. Everybody kind of still is talking about AI is like, oh yeah, this kind of pie in the sky. Nope, it's working for you right now. It's already embedded across right. our fusion applications. So yep. That's great. Yeah, and I, and I think one of the things, I, I think we have 50, 50 plus yep. agents, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, one of the things we're going to talk to uh, Chris Leone as well a little bit about agents. But a lot this, about agents. A lot about it. Maybe all about it. <laughs> like agents. the entire interview is about agents. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, but this idea of you know people getting used to these ideas, right? So like, you know, we we embed it, we make it easy. It doesn't cost anything. It's just part of the application. But when these agents start to now now they're they're going to be in fusion. There's this notion of well, okay, stand back and watch what they do. How do people get used to that idea? What what do you expect? from customers using agents. I want to jump in on that for a sec. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. The stand back and watch what they do, yes, there is some of that. But what's also powerful is the interaction, like Aiden was saying, yeah. and the clarification. Oh, you know, what about this? I wasn't sure what to do here. Right. And taking guidance from, so it really become, it's the interaction as well as the autonomy. Right, that's a good point. Yeah, anything to add to that? Yeah, no, I, I think uh, Miranda's exactly right. Uh, we're in the technology will get to a stage one day where it can operate entirely autonomously. But where it is today, we have to bridge this gap between the model doesn't make mistakes and the model sometimes makes mistakes. And the way to do that is to really prioritize the interaction between the human uh, and the model. And so the model can raise its hand and say, hey, I, I don't know how to get out of this problem. Can you help me get unstuck? And as it improves, it needs to ask that less and less often. Um, but you need to give the user, the human, the ability to intervene over what the model's doing and help it solve those problems. Well, I think when you say that, I think, and tell me if this is right or wrong, I think about these interactions we have today with, with chatbots and so forth that say, was this helpful? And then you can say, no, I was actually looking more for this. And it refines that and, and, and learns from that. Is it similar to that? But more. Yeah, scaled up. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the ability for the human to give feedback and for the model to be receptive to that feedback and know how to action on it is like a crucial component to utility and, and just user experience. It's not nice when you give feedback to a model and it makes the same mistake again. It needs to be able to action on the feedback the user expresses. I said you must go to your room. There's no <laughs> other answer. Um, well, what can we expect next from the partnership? Well, we'll start with you. Uh, well, I think there's a lot more coming, especially on the product side. Uh, so for Coherent Oracle, our focus is on getting this tech into the hands of your users, employees, enterprises, the world. Uh, and so we're just excited about actually putting it into products, whether it's Fusion, NetSuite, uh, Cerner, we want to get it out there. Oh, great. Miranda? And we're looking forward to bringing to the end customers and really working with the end customers on how they're improving their businesses with these embedded AI functionality, yeah. Well, outside of our partnership and AI, um, again, we are here in officially day three, but day two of all of the craziness of, of Cloud World 2024. What has excited you both the most? You know, we don't have to stick to the AI theme, but is there any announcements that have kind of thrilled you or uh, caught you off guard, surprised you? I mean, I'm biased. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I think that our announcements around what we're doing with Fusion yeah. uh, are fantastic. Actually, getting agents out into production, uh, I think it's one of the first enterprise applications that has done that. Yes, we, um, we were talking about that with with Chris Leone. Yeah. And so that that impact and seeing where we are in the stage of productionization of this technology, I think is is really exciting. I was looking back a year uh, into our partnership when I was here last year, and the amount we've accomplished in 12 months is a bit surreal. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Well, congratulations. That's, that's awesome to hear. 
What about you, Miranda? I, I feel the same. Looking back, how far things have come and the conversations I'm having this year with customers about AI compared to last year, I mean, they're on a whole nother level. Yeah. And, you know, Cohere is going fast, we're going fast, and our customers are getting there too. It's good. We're, we're, we're meeting our customers' demand is what I keep hearing. So that's awesome. Well, thank you both so much for joining us on Oracle TV. Thank you so much.